This coming Sunday is the second Sunday of Lent. Our Gospel passage comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 2 through 10. It is the familiar Gospel of the Transfiguration. Jesus takes Peter, James, and John onto a high mountain, and there he appears in a brilliant, dazzling white, a transfiguration. Let's take a listen. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. It is good to put this gospel in the context of the first and second readings from this second Sunday of Lent. In the first reading from the book of Genesis, Abraham is told to sacrifice his son Isaac. Abraham, a loving father, is willing to obey God's command and takes his son to the place God has prepared. They build an altar and put wood on it. Abraham is ready to carry out the plan to sacrifice his son when an angel appears to him and tells him to stop. In the second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, we read these words, He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Paul is speaking about the overabundant generosity of our God, who is willing to hand over his son, Jesus, to suffer death on the cross. In the Gospel, God speaks from the heavens. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Peter, James, and John are witnesses to this. They see and hear things that truly astound them. They're amazing. The glory of the Lord that they come to recognize in what they see and in what they hear will be a strong crutch for them when on another hill they will see Jesus nailed to a cross, suffer on the cross and die on that cross. The glimpse of his glory will help them gaze on his bloody suffering countenance on Mount Calvary. The witness of Abraham and the witness of Jesus can give each of us much consolation, much courage, much comfort in our own time of suffering. It may never match what they experience, but all of us during this earthly pilgrimage will experience suffering of one kind or another, and it need not overwhelm us. Rather, the wood of the cross can be the tree of life, giving us a resolve and acceptance and faith that we had not yet experienced. As we make our way through Lent, it is important to reflect on suffering in my own life and in the life of those I know and in the life of the world. Jesus comes to be our Savior, to give us a way to understand the suffering we endure. For now, let the gospel fill your week. God bless. See you in church.